Welcome to the dark stream. I am Vox Day, voxday.blogspot.com, and Infogalactic News. It's Thursday night. Um, my alma mater has been knocked out of March Madness, uh, but they comported themselves well, as they usually do, so that was nice to see. Um, <laughs> My intro is actually just Mike Cernovich's. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm wearing the shirt um, in honor of the upcoming release of Gab Pro and uh, Gab Android 4.0. I'm uh, looking forward to, to putting that on my Android machine. Um, the, uh, I have this old, I'm kind of surprised it still, <coughs> it still runs on it. I have, <coughs> I have an original Nexus 7 and uh, which works great except for the fact that you know they keep updating stuff <laughs> updating stuff and updating stuff to the point that it tends to slow stuff down so I, I you know I have <coughs> practically nothing on there anymore except for Aldico um, and uh, and Moonreader with the dictionary but um, <coughs> what do I think of Gavin McInnes um, uh, I mean if I can say this without, in, in as neutral a manner as possible, uh, I don't. Um, I really know very little about Gavin McInnes. Um, I don't. I don't watch or, you know, I don't read his books or, or, you know, watch his podcast. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he's more of a video guy. And um, although it may be a little ironic since I'm doing these periscopes now, uh, I'm just not a video guy. I'm a writer. Um, my preferred medium is the written word um, and so honestly I, I pay no attention to to video folks um, I, I've read a, a, a column or two of his on Taki um, they weren't bad so um, but you know he, he's somebody who's more he's more in line with um, with Mike Cernovich and so forth yeah um, I, I, when Mike is when Mike Cernovich is talking about the the alt-right he's you know, he's talking about more the, um, you know, the sort of Richard Spencer um, and um, and uh, TRS variant. I don't, th I don't think he's so much describing it the way that, that I look at it, which is fine. You know, I, I'm I'm not concerned about that sort of thing in the slightest. Um, you know, I don't expect uh, I don't expect the civic nationalists to publicly embrace alt-right ideology uh, until it becomes more and more uh, apparent that it's just their what passes for their political philosophy is largely incoherent yeah I, I think that in general Mike does tend to um, I, I do think he what 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 Mike calls the alt-right is what I tend to call the alt-white and so I have no problem whatsoever with Mike none um, you know, he's, he's one of my, uh, more important allies. Um, I, you know, we've, we've never, um, been ideological twins. And so that's not an issue, you know, um, I'm a Christian, he's agnostic. Um, Stefan Molyneux is the same way, you know, Steph, um, and so, I mean, I don't mind it when people ask these things, just, you know, I don't, I don't. I honestly don't think most people talking about difference between Mike and Stefan and I are are seriously trying to be divisive simply because it's pointless. Um, we know each other pretty well, um, and you know, on my blog, uh, yeah, I've been blogging for a long time. I've been blogging since two thousand and three. Uh, as you can tell from my my collection of columns, I've been writing political column since 2001. Um, but there is no one, absolutely no one, with whom I agree all the time, including myself, you know, 15 years ago. So if you don't even agree entirely with yourself uh, over time, how do you possibly expect to agree with anyone else all the time? You know, we all just have different perspectives. We have different uh, we have different ideas and that sort of thing, and so um, 
anyhow, I mean, I, you know, so it, it's, it, I mean, for me, it's not even a matter of, of respect of these guys. I mean, I love these guys. I love Mike. I love Stefan. They're fantastic. Um, and so I, I have no, um, you know, to me, it's, it's somewhat amusing when people try to, to start, <laughs> start stuff up. I mean, if you're going to tell me something, if you're, if you're going to try to tell me something about, about Mike, uh, I probably know it already. You know, I mean, for crying out loud, you know, I mean, all you got to do is follow Space Bunny. You can see that my own wife doesn't agree with me on, on numerous things. And that's fine. You know, um, it, it I, I have to admit, I do tend to find it a little bit mystifying that we're expected to. So, um, anyhow, the, um, couple things, uh, I'm not going to go into much detail because everybody's heard about it, obviously, but... Um, it is fantastic, fantastic to see the God Emperor coming out and hitting hard. Didn't I tell you he was going to do this? I mean, I didn't tell you that he was going to do that specific move, but I told you that he was just in a lull state and he was going to come back and hit hard. And here's the thing. We never know where the blow is going to land. You know, he, I mean, th this is what I keep trying to point out to people. Trump's modus operandi is to um, hit hard, push for a, a brief period of time, a week, maybe 10 days, and then he sits back and allows the reaction to take place. He doesn't try to intervene or, or interrupt the reaction. He lets it take place. What he did is he, he released a budget that completely zeroed out um, everything from National Public Radio to the Corporation for, Corporation for Public Broadcasting, the National Endowment for the Arts. He's uh, severely cut foreign aid and so forth. And I think that, again, this is just the beginning. You know, he's laid the groundwork for additional moves within the executive branch. And I think that he's going to be, um, I think he's going to be cutting entire agencies um, before too much longer. You know, hopefully the Department of Education, um, you know, but we'll see. Again, the thing is, with the God Emperor, you have to be patient. You have to stop reacting like a brainless leftist, and um, you know, and, and reacting to every little thing. That's that's not strategic. That's not tactical. It's just running around like a chicken with your head cut off. Don't do that. Just, you know, relax. You know, the guy has proven himself. And pay attention, pay attention to the symbolic statements that he makes. When he goes and, you know, lays a wreath at the, um, at, at Andrew Jackson's grave and, and publicly thanks him for his service and the example he, he played, that means... He has something big in mind. Could be the courts, could be the Federal Reserve, I don't know. But what he's doing is he, that's his way of issuing fair warning. He's letting them know, I'm an Andrew Jackson and we're going to fight and we're going to win. And so, um, so just, you know, in, in general, just be patient. There's going to be, you know, it's very much a three-step forward, two-step back process. And part of what he's doing is smoking out the opposition. Smoking out, the, you know, figuring out exactly where their weak points are. And so, um, so anyhow, and, and the other thing is that pretty soon he's going to be, um, pretty soon he's going to be, we're going to be moving into the election. Um, do I think Trump was happy with the Fed hike yesterday? Um, I, I mean, I'm sure he expected it. You know, everybody did. Um, and so, you know, I think that there's going to be more. And so, uh, you know, the, the, the interest rates are still way too low, way too low. And, you know, nobody can make any money saving anything. And the only thing, the only benefit that this is doing is, is pumping more money into Wall Street. So, um, but anyhow, I'm, I've been busy. Um, I'm very pleased to announce that we have um, 
finalized the corroding empire by Johann Kalsi. Um, if you're not familiar with that, uh, you may you may be familiar with um, a Tor books author by the name of John Scalzi, and uh, obviously he's a he's a fre frequent target of my contempt. Um, he he kind of stuck, for those of you who don't aren't aware, um, his his editor uh, Patrick Nielsen Hayden and Nielsen Hayden's wife Teresa Nielsen Hayden. Or Hayden Nielsen, I can remember, never remember how they how they do it. I think they both are Nielsen Haydens now. Anyhow, um, they started attacking me back in 2005 for a column that I wrote for World Not Daily. And the thing that's crazy about it is is the column had very little to do with um, what they were uh, had very little to do with what they were complaining about. <laughs> they had the Toad of Tor, um, and so uh, anyhow. They were attacking me. Scalzi jumped in. Um, you know, you can find it and read it. I, I think that the post was called like the New Heights of the Nebula or something. And this was the first time that I started um, getting into it with the Science Fiction Writers Association because I'd been, you know, a member in good standing with no. I'd been on their. I think I'd, I was on three different Nebula juries, and so there was no um, no issues or anything. And then suddenly, when they found out that I was this. Uh, nationally syndicated libertarian, they all started coming after me. Um, so anyhow, it did just, you know, one thing led to another. And of course, you know, Scalzi is, is the epitome of the gamma male. He cannot possibly just simply admit that he was wrong and, and give up. He always has to, he always has to spin everything. So, you know, he, he's the kind of guy where if he falls down in front of you, he's going to jump up and claim that he, he, he intended to do that. You know, it's just, he is literally the epitome of the gamma male. And so it was kind of funny because, um, you know, the, the, I write about this in SJWs Always Lie. Um, you know, he was, he was sort of the SJW that, that taught me a lot about SJWs. You know, I didn't realize how blatantly they would lie. You know, I'd always believed that he was the he was the big successful blogger and stuff. I didn't realize that he was exaggerating his traffic at his, at his most successful blog in science fiction by a factor of between five and 20, depending on the metric. And so, um, so anyhow, this just, you know, went on. So what, what's going on with, you know, what, what a lot of people don't understand is there's a, there's a, there's a issue going on that has nothing to do with Scalzi, nothing to do with me. It just has to do with publishing in general. And big publishing is in the process of failing. Um, yes, by a factor of 20. You can look, look up SJWs Always Lie. You can see I, I lay the whole thing out in, in brutal, mind-numbing mind detail. <clears throat> and so the... Um, well, yeah, Trump, Trump is the exact opposite of a gamma male. Trump is a, is a textbook alpha. You know, he has no problem admitting that he's wrong. Um, he has no problem contradicting himself. Uh, women love him. You know, he loves women. He's very, very confident. He's not faking anything. Um, and so, uh, and, and that's also, that is why, you know, Trump is a high alpha. That is why so many SJWs hate him so much, because it's not just, they don't just dislike him because of ideology. They absolutely hate him because gammas hate alphas. You know, gammas all think they deserve to be alphas, but they just don't have the the capability um, of becoming one. You know, they, they have no ability whatsoever to get people to to follow them or be loyal to them and that sort of thing because they, they, they're not loyal themselves. Uh, no, Obama is definitely not an alpha. Um, and so, uh, you know, it, it's, it, there's, there's a lot of, of utility, uh, and I get into it to a certain extent, and SJWs always double down. Um, the same way that I was explaining... Um, the same way that I was explaining Aristotelian rhetoric in SJWs Always Lie, I spend a little time explaining the um, political implications of the um, of the socio-sexual hierarchy in SJWs Always Double Down. So, um, so anyhow, to 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 get to the point, um, publishing is, the mainstream publishing is failing. They 
uh, killed themselves with their uh, very foolish battle with Amazon. Amazon essentially was trying to save them from themselves and then um, with the, the deal that they struck, that was basically Amazon saying, fine, here's the rope, go ahead and hang yourself. And they probably did. That's why you see these ludicrously priced uh, you know, Kindle versions. You, know, you see Kindle versions at price of 27 bucks. It's ridiculous, who's gonna pay that? You know, I'm a publisher and I would tell you, do not pay 27 bucks for a Kindle edition ever. Um, and so I mean, if, if Umberto Eco comes back from the grave and writes a book, fine, I'll pay 27 bucks for that Kindle. Other than that, forget it. Um, but the, um, so anyhow, they are, so Tor is kind of desperate. And so they, they come up with this big plan um, in order to uh, make Scalzi, who is, who is essentially what, what I would call a high mid-list author. You know, he's, he's not a best-selling author the way that they like to, to build him as. Um, he's, he's basically a mid-list author. You know, he does well. He's profitable for, he's, he's a profitable author for the publisher. But here's the thing. You know, just like a, a, when you're playing baseball or football, you can't, you can't pay all-star money to a run-of-the-mill, um, you know, to a run-of-the-mill uh, running back. Or wide receiver, you just can't. You cannot pay Tom Brady money to the guy who can, you know, barely, you know, barely play 500 ball for a, a lousy team. It just doesn't work. And so, so what? That's what Tor's done. They pumped a whole bunch of money into him. They they gave him this like huge 10 year, 13 year, whatever contract worth three million bucks. It's yeah. You know, it's it's. I mean, Scalzi and Brock Osweiler are actually a pretty good comparison. And so. Um, Actually, that's not quite fair. It's not quite fair because, I mean, Instapundit definitely did help Scalzi, but he was also being pushed very, very hard by Patrick Nielsen Hayden because um, despite the fact that Tor Books has been the leading science fiction publisher for quite some time, they have missed every single major science fiction and fantasy series in the past 20 years. They've completely, you know... Everything from The Hunger Games to Harry Potter to George R. R. Martin, every single major science fiction and fantasy series author and, and, uh, and series they have missed, with the one exception of Brandon Sanderson. Brandon, Brandon Sanderson. Um, I think that Sanderson's going to leave Tor at, at his earliest opportunity. When he does, that's going to be very difficult for them. I've also heard that Tor has cut a number of mid-list authors whose names you'll recognize. Word hasn't gotten out yet, but it's already happened. And so, um, so anyhow, uh, we were, uh, you know, we were just laughing at the, well, when we heard that the title of, of Scalzi's first book under the, under the big contract was going to be called The Collapsing, or the, yeah, The Collapsing Empire, we laughed because, of course, the joke had been uh, which you know, which uh, science fiction author was he going to be ripping off? Because that's what he does. You know, he's a stunt author. He 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 can't create anything new himself. So what he does is he rips stuff off. You know, the, the old man's war stuff is is his attempt to rip off Heinlein. Um, there's the H. Beam Piper stuff with Fuzzy Nation. Um, he he briefly and very foolishly tried to rip off um, uh, Philip K. Dick. Um, that was actually the book that caused me to stop reading Scalzi stuff. It was just, it was so bad. Um, you know, the, you're, you're trying to rip off Philip K. Dick or, or pay an homage to Philip K. Dick with a, a chapter long fart joke. I mean, come on. So, <laughs> so anyhow, um, so I actually did, I actually did uh, predict that he was going to try to rip off Isaac Asimov and I, and I turned out to be correct. Um, so, so, I mean, it's really funny because when you, when, when you read the, um, you know, there's a, actually a planet called End, which, um, of course, is, is based on Terminus in, uh, in Foundation and so forth. Um, but what, so, you know, we, we, we had thought it would be funny to um, some of the guys at Castelia House. We thought it would be funny to come out with a book that was, um, you know, very similar 
at the same time. And, and it started off as just kind of a, oh, wouldn't that be funny? We didn't actually do anything. And then one of the, when the actual cover was, it, when the actual cover was uh, created, um, the tour cover, we thought, <laughs> we thought, okay, um, uh, you know, one of the artists was like, oh, geez, I could, I could crank one of those things out. And, and, and he did, you know. And so I talked to, um, uh, you know, a couple of the authors, we were joking, and I didn't have, I didn't have the time to do it. Um, some of the other guys didn't have the time to do it. We just thought it was, would be funny. And then we found this author who was, uh, was pretty good and, um, Johan Kalsi and, uh, you know, fin Finland's hottest new science fiction author. And, uh, he, he actually, he's, he sent me some stuff and it was, it was pretty damn good, you know? And, um, you know, it was very, it was very Asimovian. And so, um, well, I thought, okay, you know, maybe, maybe we can do this. Maybe we can do this. And so anyhow, um, <laughs> well, obviously it's a pen name and for crying out loud. Um, but, uh, but the, um, so anyhow, uh, we ended up managing to, because, because Scalzi delayed his own book so long, because it took him over a year to do it. Um, you know, we thought, okay, this is this, we, we can actually come out with, we can actually get this book out before the collapsing empire comes out. And, uh, but here's the thing, the goal was, you know, it started off as a bit of a joke, but then we suddenly realized that, you know, we wanted to publish a book that was actually going to be better than, uh, you know, Tor Books' biggest author, as it were. Um, so anyhow, it's going to be interesting. And, um, you know, the book is now on pre-order. Um, I would highly, highly encourage any of you who uh, hold Scalzi in contempt, similar to the, the contempt that we hold him, to go look up The Corroding Empire, which is uh, Mr. Calsey's new book. Look up The Corroding Empire and pre-order it. It's inexpensive. It's only, it's only like five bucks. Um, but I can tell you, I can tell you, it's, uh, I guarantee, I guarantee it is much more genuinely Asimovian than the crap that Scalzi came out with. Uh, legal concerns? About what? You cannot protect, we could, we could have actually called it the collapsing empire if we, if we wanted to. Um, now the funny thing is, here's the, here's the kind of, the initial punchline is that, you know, right when we were about to submit it to pre-order, um, we put, we put the thing out, or, or, or um, Tor comes out with this three chapter excerpt from the collapsing empire. Plus they cut the price. They completely cut the price, um, to the, to their pre-orders. And so, I mean, which, which again, if you're a publisher, you understand they know the collapsing empire is going to be a disaster. I mean, it, the, um, the excerpts were so unbelievably bad. I posted, I posted part of one on my blog and people thought I was making fun of them. I mean, they thought it was so bad that they thought it wasn't the real excerpt. It was something that I had made up to make him look bad. <laughs> and I mean, it, it's, it's, um, it, it's going to, it, it's going to be brutal. Um, the reception I would expect, you know, and of course the SJWs are going to try to talk it up and all that sort of thing. Um, but, uh, I, you know, I mean, at this point, it's it's not even it's not even a, a, a joke. Um, you know, the corroding empire is is objectively a much better book than the book it's supposed to be a parody of. I mean, it it sort of went beyond it sort of went beyond parody um, to now. It's just it's it's almost a little bit. It's all you know. It almost feels like a little bit too much. You know, especially when. Uh, the reviews start coming in and the corroding empire gets much better reviews than the collapsing empire is going to, because I mean, the things, you know, I knew it was going to be bad. I knew it was going to be as bad as it is, but I knew it would be bad when the first 
um, professional reviews, Kirkus reviews and, and whatnot, started appearing about the collapsing empire because, and here's the key, they talked about the author, not the book. This is a, a very reliable tell. Whenever you're reading a review of a new book, especially from a big name author, the more they talk about the author and the less they talk about the book, the more the book sucks. You know, if you, if, if you like a book, then you talk about the book. If you like the author, but you don't like his book, then you try to say nice things about the author. And so, um, so it's going to be very interesting. You know, I, I now, uh, I, I don't think it's likely that, uh, Scalzi is going to write very many more books under that contract for Tor. Um, we'll see how much longer Macmillan even wants him around because, um, you know, th this is, they're going to lose a lot of money on this, on this one book. Now, that doesn't mean that it's not worth it to have the author, you know, um, obviously, you know, the, he, there is an audience for the you know, snarky mediocrity that, that the guy writes. And that's fine, you know, there's plenty of gammas out there. If they want to, if they want to read about somebody always, you know, saying clever stuff, then uh, that's, that's fine. Uh, see you, Skulls. I am going to get back to it after I get SJW, SJW is always double down done. Um, I'm just taking a bit of a break from it, um, you know, but it, it's not, no, no problems, no writer's block, no nothing like that. Um, it's just, you know, uh, um, I've been involved in one game design project, fairly large game design project. I'm about to get another one going here. We're just wrapping up all the, the, the contract details. And so, um, I'm just busy, you know, and then we've got a lot of great stuff coming out from John C. Wright. We've got stuff coming out from Peter Grant. I'm working on um, Rocky Mountain Retribution right now. Um, you know, Castellia is growing fast. I mean, we're, we're averaging 100% growth um, year on year. And so it's, um, you know, it's just, uh, there, there's a lot to do. You know, fortunately, we've got great volunteers. Um, and, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff. In, in fact, uh, one thing I can... I can break the news here on Periscope. Um, we just actually picked up uh, uh, the audiobooks for Brian Niemeyer. So, um, you know, he, he's got uh, three really good books. Um, we will be publishing the audiobooks for those. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, Amazon's fine. Some of our books are only available on Amazon because if you want them to be in Kindle Unlimited, they have to be Kindle Select. So uh, you have this unusual situation where you know some of our books you can't buy directly from us um, because we need them to be on Kindle Unlimited. So SJWs always lie. You can only buy through Amazon or buy the paperback. So um, I think I mentioned, uh, I, I think you guys know that um, doing the audiobooks, I don't, I don't know what John Fear doing the audiobooks means. Um, I don't know who's doing the audiobooks. I have no idea. Uh, I don't. I don't run the audiobook division, so I just sort of, <laughs> I just sort of send the stuff off. The, the only, um, well, I got to finish writing writing the actual book first. So, um, however, Bob has said that he is going to jump on it immediately. So as soon as as soon as I get the text done, I will send it off to Bob. And he'll get the he'll get the audiobook done, um, but yeah. So uh, definitely, if you get a chance, um, uh, I would encourage you to pre-order. Um, uh, I'd encourage you to pre-order uh, the Corroding Empire by Johann Kalsi, and it's coming out on March twentieth, one day before the Collapsing Empire. So um, I would also encourage you to review it. And, um, you know, I really want to see, I really want to see more, uh, I, I want to see us to have 10 times as many reviews on Corroding Empire. Um, you know, that's, you, you, you know, people often ask me, how can I make a difference? What can I do? And, you know, one of the things I tell them all the time is, look, support your own. Um, even if you don't have any money, 
there's always plen plenty of stuff that you can do. You know, writing reviews on Amazon doesn't cost you anything, but it's a big boost to people. You know, it's just like watching YouTube. They absolutely help that much. I mean, there's a, why do you think SJWs go and post fake reviews and post fake one star reviews on the books of authors they don't like? You know, um, in the case of Roosh, for example, they went after him. Over a hundred people went and, and simultaneously left um, fake one star negative reviews of one of his books trying to drive the rating down. It's a standard SJW tactic. How do you stop it from happening? You know, because people used to do that to me quite a bit. They don't do it anymore because my readers understand how important it is to go out and post reviews of the books. And so, you know, I'm not asking, I'm not asking people to go out and post fake reviews. You know, don't, don't, don't post a review of a book that you haven't read. I mean, as a former professional reviewer, I find that offensive. But, you know, it doesn't take long to just, you know, pop up, you know, write down two or three sentences about the book, you know, just what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it, and then rate it fairly. You know, if you think it's a great book, give it five stars. If you think it's a good book, but it's, you know, kind of flawed in this way and that's so, why, you know, give it four. If you think it totally sucks, give it one, you know, and, and, and that's a good idea. You have a look at the negative reviews and you can see the fake ones. They're so obvious. You know, you, you know, I, I especially like the, the two-star fake reviews because that's always somebody trying to be subtle. And, and they make these comments about, they, they try to make these general comments. And what's really funny is when they clearly have no idea what the book actually is. And so they have these comments about, you know, the, the plot is generic and um, I just find the character, found the characters very tedious and the dialogue was juvenile. <laughs> like, dude, it's a nonfiction book. There is no dialogue, there are no characters, and there's no plot. So, you know, clearly you're lying. But, but you know, you have to appreciate the effort. They at least try, they at least try to make it. Yeah, tedious is a, tedious is a, is a good word, uh, is, a, is a good signal word for uh, that it's a fake review. It's not necessarily. Um, I, I certainly use tedious occasionally, but... Um, but yeah, they, I mean, the thing is, they, they all, the fake reviews always sound the same. You know, I can, I can spot one almost immediately, um, even before I read the whole thing and realize that the person has not said a single thing about the actual book. That, you know, they've not said a single thing that indicates that they're actually familiar with the book. Um, yeah, the missionaries, um, I highly, highly, if, if you buy one, just one book from Castelia, buy the missionaries. You know, I realize that sounds a little strange given that Castelia publishes a fair number of my books, but honestly, uh, The Missionaries is probably the one that I'm proudest of us publishing. Um, I mean, if, the, if there was a book that deserved to win awards, it was that one. And so, um, you know, and, and I'm very pleased. In fact, probably one of the best, one of the best things that I've, I've done as a publisher is I convinced Owen Stanley to write another book. You know, he had no plans whatsoever to, to write another uh, novel. And so um, I, uh, I, you know, he was like, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, you know, I don't really have any ideas. And I said, well, you know, what about this? And he's like, no, no, and what, you know, what about that? Uh, well, you know, I, I kind of have this idea about, you know, you know, the insanity of, of life in, in English academia, you know, because he knows all about it. And I said, um, well, that, you know, that sounds pretty fruitful to me. Um, and then he, then he starts like kind of telling me a little bit more of this, his idea for the story. And the thing is, I was cracking up just listening to him to just describe it, you know, and if you've read the missionaries, you know how funny the guy is. And so, um, so he said, yeah, you know, I, I actually, I think, I think I can, I, I think there's a, a book here. So, um, anyhow, I have no idea um, how far he is with it. I have no idea when he's gonna gonna finish it. I, I any excerpt for preview from uh, Wolf? Well, no, because there's no title, there's no text, there's I have nothing from him. Um, you know, 
he'll send it to me when he sends it to me. But but I know he's working on it, um, uh, and I have absolutely no doubt that it's going to be brilliant. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so anyhow, thanks. Um, the excerpt from the no. That's uh, let's leave it there because uh, you know I don't actually know what he's what he's doing. So. Um, yeah, Amazon does let you read the first page. That's the other tell, is whenever they talk about stuff, they only refer to stuff that is in the preview. That's another one. So, But um, anyhow, thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, join the, join the fun. Um, we really appreciate the support that you guys give Castalia House. Um, you know, we would not exist without you guys. And we are growing because of you guys. And, you know, I do want you to know that we listen to you guys. People tell, you know, you guys tell us the kind of stuff that you like. You tell us the kind of stuff that you don't like. And, you know, we are trying to be receptive to that while maintaining the framework of our vision. So, anyhow, um, it's going to be fun. Uh, stop by Amazon and the blog on March 20th because that's when the, um, that's when the Corroding Empire comes out and... Um, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good time. Have a good evening.